Hi, this is Misty and Michelle from lovethatshot.com. In this video, we're going to introduce you to our photo veils, which are exclusive to Love That Shot. So we're really excited to show those to you. Also, we're gonna get creative with some photo textures and feature some photos from um, talented photographers in our community of photographers. So let's get started and jump right in. All right, I, hi, I'm Michelle and I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about photo veils and it, photo veils are so fun. They are a, a little similar to textures except they don't have texture. They're, uh, they are just really fun ways to get creative with the color in your photos. And I like to think of them as frosting for your photos. They're kind of like the little final touch that adds that little bit of wow to your photos. And if you're really into doing creative edits on your photos, but you don't like a lot of the texture looks that are that you get with textures, these are perfect for clean and simple um, edits. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you a really simple one where I'm just gonna use one photo veil. And this particular photo veil is my go-to veil. I use it on nearly every single one of my photos. And um, I'll show you just how easy it is to really create a great look using just one photo veil. So I'm going to start by playing the Veil Infusion action. And these are so fun. They really allow you to add the photo veils to your photos really easily. So we'll click on the, photo, or the Veil Infusion action. And that's the basic one that we'll work with um, all of the photo veils and when you click play it will pop up a little message telling you to just navigate to the photo veil you'd like to use and then it will it gives you further instructions on what to do so I'm going to choose one out of the botanical photo veil collection and I'm going to choose privet and this one is really nice. It's a really neutral photo veil and we're going to rotate this. And if you can see here, there's a lighter spot sort of on a, a little bit away from the middle. I like to place that lighter spot right over my subject because um, what that does is just sort of highlights your subject. So I'm going to press my shift key on the keyboard while I rotate this photo and that helps keep it straight. So we'll place it right over the photo and then click the green check mark and then the action is going to do everything else for you. So what this does is it puts it into a blending mode and it, the one that works with all of our photo veils the best is soft light. Some photo veils work well in other blending modes, but soft light is pretty much the default one you'll use with most of the photo veils. And I'm going to leave the opacity at 100%. So here is the uh, photo with the photo veil, and here it is without. And I just love the real simple way this adds just the perfect boost to my photos. It warms it up and just gives it a nice little contrast boost also. So that is a really simple one where you can use with most any of your photos. And it's one that will work with nearly every photo. I use it all the time on mine. So I'm going to show you next a little bit more creative way to use photo veils. And I'm going to go ahead and use the one we just did. Because again, I like to use it on everything. Mm -hmm. And this time I'm going to place that lighter spot. I'm going to rotate it the opposite way and put it right over my girls in the lower left hand corner. And for this one, I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit to about 75%. And that kind of gives it just a little subtle effect. And then the next one is really going to add the creative 
creative fun effect. So with this one, I'm going to use the Veil Infusion Blast action. And what this does, it gives you a few more options in the blending mode. I'm going to choose Honey Wheat from the Botanical Collection. And with this one, you can see that there's kind of a little bit of a direction with the colors. And I like to make the direction go where the light is coming from. So with this one, I'm going to rotate it. And then since the light is coming from this part of the photo, I'm going to flip this layer. To flip it horizontal so now we get those directions from the lighter parts of the photo veil sort of simulating where the light is coming from in the photo so now you'll see with the veil infusion blast action that it gives us several different blending mode options I'm going to turn off the soft light one and I'm going to choose the hard light blending mode and this sort of gives a, a hazy um, sunset glow effect. And it's just a little bit strong, so I'm going to turn the opacity down even more to about 35%. And there it is. So with the Fail Infusion Blast, any of the layers that you're not using you can just go ahead and delete and here I'm going to show you the before and after so here's the before without the veils and here's the after and it, this is just a really fun way to add in some creativity to your photos in a really easy and simple way to do it I'm going to move on and show you an even more way to get creative. Um, in this one, I'm going to use several different photo veils. And what's fun about photo veils is you can layer them. And it's really fun to experiment and just add a bunch of photo veils and see what they do to your photos. So I'm going to start again with Privet, my go-to. <laughs> And this is in the botanical collection. So we'll just resize it and leave it at 100% opacity. And next, I'm going to grab a photo veil from the simplicity collection granite. And it's another fun one that's. It's kind of a neutral one that adds a little bit of warmth and just a, a boost to your photo. So there's what that one does. And add another one. And I'm going to grab this one from the Botanical Collection. Pearl Flower. And I'll just resize it to make it fit and this one I'll turn down to about 80 percent and sometimes you may find that you want to try out a different blending mode even though you've used um, the veil infusion action you can still change the blending mode so just click the little drop down menu and choose what you want and I'm going to try overlay on this one just to give it a little more of, a, of an effect. <laughs> overlay is a little bit stronger than soft light. They're, they're very similar blending modes. Um, they're just overlay is stronger than soft light. So I'll keep it at overlay. And now I'm going to add a vintage effect using the Vintage Blast action. So the vintage, the vintage veils uh, can be found in the botanical collection, and they're really cool because they use 
one specific blending mode and I'll show you that in just a minute and they're just really fun because they add a really cool vintage effect to your photos so I'll just plop it on my photo and the action does the rest and it uses the exclusion blending mode and this one is fun because it sort of blends the color right into the shadows and it just really does cool things to the shadows and and the highlights kind of just transforming the color into something really cool so that's what the vintage blast action and veils do and it sort of just really gives a little hazy vintage effect in the darker areas so that is the four photo veils I used on this picture and it's fun because you can just layer them as much as you want here's the before and here's the after next I'm going to show you some of the photos from our photographers from our community and the first one I want to show you is from Diana Smith and these are just I, I'm going to kind of go through them quickly because this is the point of photo veils they are so fast and easy to use all right I'm going to add my first veil using the veil infusion action and this is coming from the simplicity collection I'm going to choose honey crisp and I'll rotate it really quick and I'm gonna leave it at soft light and opacity at 100% and here's what that does and it's just really fun I'm gonna grab another one I'm gonna grab the Rowan Ash from the Simplicity Collection I'll keep that at soft light and opacity at 100% and what this kind of did is just really affect the darker areas and I'm gonna grab one more chamomile from the simplicity collection and this it's really fun to just adjust the opacities to your liking and there's really no right or wrong way to do it it's just what you like on your photos so that's it for this one here's the before and here's the after this combination just really gave it a light airy feel to the photo so the next one I love the effect of the the fog in this image from Dina Brender it's it's sort of a moody feel and I would just want to enhance the feel of that fog with the cow so I am going to use one of the vintage blast actions to pull a vintage photo veil from the botanical collection and for this one I'm, I'm going to choose plum and we'll just drag it to fit our photo And with these, the vintage ones, you don't really have to be too um, precise with the, you don't have to rotate them just exactly. You can just stretch them as much as you want. And I'm going to leave the opacity at 100%. And so you can see it kind of just gave it a really cool sort of purplish undertones almost to the fog. Like a, almost like a Polaroid. Yeah, and I'm going to grab one more veil using the view, uh, the veil infusion action. And this one, I'm going to just warm it up just a little bit. So I'll choose the agave photo veil. And it drop the opacity down to about 30%. And that kind of just warms it up just a little bit 
So there is the before and there's the after. If this is kind of a more subtle effect, but you can really tell the difference when we go from the before and after. And with this photo, it, this one is really going to get a cool transformation. This photo is from Jean Matheson, and I just love this. I love the the subtle um, sunset colors in the background, and I really wanted to bring that into the subject, this lovely girl in front of the ocean. So I really want to lighten up this photo. I'm going to go to the Veil and Fusion Actions and grab one from the Simplicity Collection. And here we're going to use some of the lighter photo veils. So I'll grab grass stains and we'll stretch it to fit our photo. And I'll leave that at 100% opacity. And that right there really lightened her up pretty good. But we're going to lighten her up a lot more. So I'm going to grab a couple more photo veils from the Simplicity Collection. And this one we're going to get History. We'll just fit it to our photo. And we'll leave it at soft light and 100% opacity. And there is really getting those really nice sunset tones onto our subject. So I'm going to grab one more veil, again from the Simplicity Collection. And we're going to do Salmon Salad Surprise <laughs> to sort of bring in that sunset tone. With this one, it's just a little bit strong, so we'll take the opacity down to about 42%. So just with these three veils, we took it whoops, from this to this. And I really love just those three simple edits just made this photo really cool. This last photo is from Carrie Vorholt, and I love this photo. It's just got a really cool rock and roll effect or look to it. So I want to enhance that with the photo veils. So I'm going to go back to Veil and Fusion, and this is, as you can probably tell, the one you'll be using the most. It's just the default one that works with most every photo. We're going to go to the Botanical Collection and grab White Clover. We'll fit it to our photo. And it's just a little bit too green at 100% opacity. So I'll take that down to about 70%. And then I'm going to grab two of the vintage infusion photos or photo veils the vintage veils using the vintage blast action <laughs> so I'll grab chive and chive is a, a deep green because I I chose that one because of the photo veil I just used and I want to get that sort of color tone in it and I'll take the opacity down to about 40%. Just have a subtle green effect. And then I'll grab one more. We're going to grab blood orange. And we'll take the opacity down to 50%. Just to give it a little bit of that vintage effect. And so with just those three photo veils, we took it from this photo to this. I just really love that cool vintage effect it has in the background. So those are photo veils and they're so much fun to use and they're so easy and really you can edit your photos in just seconds. I, I can just whip through 
photos using photo veils so fast and that's and um, one of the reasons I I came to create photo veils is because I wanted a really fast and easy editing solution so those are photo veils so now we're gonna jump right into photo textures and for this I'm going to switch over to Photoshop and photo textures work in elements too we're just showing two different programs so just if you're wondering yeah and photo veils work photo veils work in Photoshop too so they're interchangeable that's why we're showing both programs so for this first photo um, this one is from Jane Hawes and I just love the purple flowers and it drew me in just right off the bat and we're going to add a couple of textures to it the first one is from the Kalani collection and this one is called Luau and we'll just resize it over our photo and then double click and it automatically the action that we run automatically puts it into a soft light blending mode at 100 percent and oftentimes I don't use textures at full opacity just because they tend to be a little bit strong but for this photo I'm gonna keep it at hundred percent because I just really like the effect that it's creating and I'm going to actually smooth out the texture over the flowers because I like whenever there's a texture in the photo I want it to come through so I'll, I'll often smooth out the texture that I'm adding so I'm gonna run the smoothing action and select a soft round brush and to get the brush larger I'll click the right bracket key on my keyboard or to do to get it smaller I can hit the left bracket key it's just a little shortcut that I like to use then I'll take my opacity down to 50% on the brush and make sure that my white is showing here and then I'll just paint over the flowers just a little bit I'm going to actually zoom in so you can see the difference so this is with the smoothing the smoothing action on it and that's without so you can see how it lets the flowers texture shine through rather than the texture we add so now I'm going to add another texture from the Kalani collection and this one is called Menahune? Menahune. 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 <laughs> These names are fun to say so you just have to say them out loud just for the fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll resize it over our photo and double click. And now this one is just a little bit too strong so I'm going to take it down to about 75%. And then again I'm going to smooth over the flowers. And now, here's the before any photo textures, and here's the after. Such a huge difference. It makes them look a little more like paintings rather than just photographs. So it's really fun to get creative. So this next photo that I want to show you is from Jennifer Turner. And I love alleyway shots, and this just looks like it was taken probably in Italy. I'm not sure where, but if it was, I'm kind of jealous because I would so love to go to Italy. But um, we're actually going to take it and make it, kind of give it an old worldly effect using the old world collection of photo textures. So the first texture I'm going to add is Calais from the old world collection. And we just, to rotate the photo texture, just hover over a corner and press shift on your keyboard. And then it rotates in a, I think, 15 degree increments. That way you get a 90 degree angle. It makes it a lot easier. So then we'll just double click and it automatically applies the soft light blending mode at 100%. 
And for this one, I'm going to keep it at 100% because I really like the effect that it's giving. It's kind of, well, here's the before and the after. It kind of gives it a grunge-like effect. And then we're going to add another texture from the Old World collection. And this one is called Sicily. And we'll rotate it as well and resize it over the photo and then double click. And I just love the effect that it's starting to get. And here's the before with no textures and here's the effect so far. So now we're going to add one more texture to get a little bit of blue back in the sky or add a little bit of blue into the sky so that your eye doesn't just go right there. So we're going to add Naples from the Old World collection and we'll rotate it and this one it doesn't matter exactly where it, it doesn't matter if you put it over the entire photo I'm just gonna kinda stretch it to fit in where the sky is and I'm actually gonna change the blending mode to multiply instead of soft light and take the opacity down to about 70 percent and now we want to get rid of these hard edges so we're gonna paint over this mask that's automatically added to our photo texture layer but I want to paint in the area of the sky so I'm gonna invert the mask to black so I'm hiding what I just did. To do that, I'll click Control i on the keyboard, and so everything that I just did disappeared. That way I can go back into the photo mask, or the layer mask, and paint in my sky. So I wanna make sure that I have a soft round brush, and around 50% opacity is good, and make sure that the white is showing so I'm painting in the areas. So then I can just go in, and make the brush a little bit smaller as I go. And then just paint in the areas of the sky. And then if I wanna increase the opacity to 100% just up here, I can do that. And then if you happen to go over the building area and you don't want that texture to show there, all you need to do is switch over to your black brush and then paint those areas. And if you go over just a little bit and there's a halo, all you need to do is switch back to the white and then paint over it again. Here is the before and the after. Such a huge difference. It makes it look that much more old worldy and vintage like. So the next photo that I want to show you is by Kim Stevens. And for this one, I'd like to add just a little bit of contrast into the flowers. So to do that, I'm going to start out by adding an adjustment layer of hue saturation. And then I'm going to take the saturation all the way down to negative 100. Now I'm going to use a soft light blending mode and keep the opacity at 100%. Now I want to just keep this effect over the flowers and bring back the original background and vase. So I'm going to invert this layer, this layer mask to black by clicking Control I on the keyboard and then make sure that the soft round brush is selected with white showing and make the opacity 50%, and then I'll just go in and paint in over my flowers. And that'll just give the photo a nice base for the photo texture to lay over. So here's the before and the after. So now we're ready to add our first photo texture. And this one is Galileo from the Old World Collection. And I just want to hover over the corner 
hold down shift and rotate the texture and then I'll resize it over my photo and double click. And it automatically gives the, or selects a soft light blending mode at 100% and I'm gonna keep it there because I like the effect that it's creating. And then I'm going to do the smoothing action over my flowers again. And make sure that the soft round brush is selected, make sure the white is showing, and I'll increase the brush, brush size and then start painting in over the flowers. And that'll just take away all of the texture that we just added over the flowers. Or, yeah, the texture. It'll still leave the color tone. That's what's cool about this smoothing action. So then here's the before without any edits and the after. Such a huge difference already, but I'm going to add another texture to it. And this one is Bordeaux from the Old World Collection. And I'll rotate it. And resize it. And then double click. And this one's just a little bit too strong, so I'm going to take it the opacity down to about 75%. So you notice that it gives the photo an overall saturated look. I actually want to run the tone it down action and that's going to tone that saturated look down just a little bit. So here's the before and the after. But I want to take and bring back in some of that purplish color from the texture. So I'm going to take the opacity of this down to about 63 or 64%. And so here's the before and after. And now I'm going to add one last texture. From the Old World collection and this one is Chateau and I'll rotate it and then resize it and for this one I actually want to change the blending mode to screen and then it's too strong so I'm going to take the opacity down to about 60% and then I want to bring back the detailing in the flowers, so I'm going to select the layer mask and switch my color to the black so that I'm hiding the texture. And I'll select the soft round brush and then just start painting back in my flowers. And then for the background flowers, I want to run the smoothing action to get rid of some of the texture but I want to keep the tone. Oh, make sure that the white is showing and then just paint over those areas. And then here's the before without any textures or edits at all. And here's the after. Such a huge difference. I love the effect that these textures give this photo. And so now the next photo that I want to show you is from Kim Peterson. And this photo is just already so gorgeous, but we're going to add in a few textures to enhance the style of the photo. But first I'm going to do a hue saturation adjustment layer. Take the saturation all the way down. And then give it a soft light blending mode. And then take the opacity down to about 80%. And then here's the before and the after. We actually want the contrast to be just over the girl and bring back the color and tone from the background. So I'm going to invert this by clicking Control I and then selecting my soft round brush, making sure that the white is showing. And then I'll just go ahead and paint over the areas that I want a little bit more contrasty. So here's the before and the after. It just gives the subject a little bit more definition and contrast and really brings them out. So now we're ready to add our first photo texture. So these are coming from the Old World collection again and this first one is called Vercelli. And I'll rotate it and then resize it and double click. And it automatically gives the soft light blending mode at 100%. And I like the effect that, it's, that it has in the background. And I want to keep that. 
but I want to take out the texture over the skin. So I'm going to run the smoothing action and then just brush over the skin. And then you'll notice in the over the skin it's just a little bit too reddish colored. So I'm going to run the tone it down action. And then I'm going to invert the mask again and then brush over the areas that I want to get rid of that reddish tone. And I like I like how it's affecting the hair, so I'm going to keep it there. And here is the before and the after with our edits. But I'm going to add one more texture from the Old World collection, and this one is called La Rochelle. And I'll rotate it and resize it. And this one, I want to take the opacity down to about 60% because it's just a little bit too strong and then run the smoothing action over the skin to get the texture off the skin. And then you'll notice sometimes when you're using textures that there are some dark spots that might not look, might interfere with your photo just a little bit. So to get rid of that, all you need to do is click on the texture layer, select the stamp tool, make the brush a little bit larger, and then click Alt, and then click a sample area, and then just paint. And then that'll get rid of some of those areas that might not look good over a subject or over skin. So here's the before without any edits, and here's the after. I just love how it affects this photo and, and just gives it a nice warmth and brightens it up a little bit. So this next photo that I want to show you is from Shannon Shaw. And when I first saw this, I just knew that it needed a vintage edit. So I'm going to show you how I did that now. The first thing I like to do when I do a vintage style edit is add an adjustment layer of hue saturation and take it all the way down to negative 100. And then I want to bring back in some of the color from the original photo. So I'm going to decrease the opacity to about 48, 49%, and you can see it's already starting to come back. But then what I like to do is duplicate this original background layer by clicking Control J on the keyboard, and then I'll move that above my hue saturation layer and change the blending mode to soft light and keep it at 100%. So you see, how it's just added this vintage feel over the photo. Here's the before and the after. So now we're ready to add our first texture. And for this photo, I want to use textures from the Kalani collection. The first one I'm going to add is called Kupu Kupu. And we'll just resize it over the photo and double click. And it's automatically giving it a soft light blending mode, but I actually want to change that to hard light to bring, bring in the texture of the texture. And I'm going to decrease the opacity to about 55%. Now I want to take out this green tint over the girl. So I'm going to select my layer mask, make sure that the black is showing and select my soft round brush. And then I'll just paint over her. And then if you go a little bit too far over, you can always just go back in and select the white and paint back in so there's not a halo. So now I'm ready for my next texture. This one is called Kiki. And I'll resize it and double click. And I want to actually change this to hard light as well and then decrease the opacity to about 60, 64%. And then I'm going to add another texture called Honey. And then I'll resize it and double click. 
And this one I actually want to keep soft white, but I'm going to decrease the opacity to about 75% and then smooth, smooth out over the skin. You can see that it's looking pretty bad, so we want to get rid of that texture. And this smoothing action only goes to, so far, but I have a trick that I like to do sometimes that'll add kind of a foggy, misty type of feel to the photo. So to do that, I'm going to select all of my layers by clicking on the top layer, holding shift on the keyboard, and clicking the bottom layer, and then right click, duplicate layers, right click, merge layers. Now I want to move this layer over the top of the second texture that I added. And then I want to link it to that layer by holding down Alt on the keyboard and hovering in between the two layers. You notice that the icon changes and you just click and then it links that layer to the layer underneath. Now what I want to do is apply a Gaussian blur. And you can see it already adds this fog-like effect to the photo. And you just slide the slider until you know, or until you see the effect that you like. And I think that's just about right. So I'm going to click OK. And then I want to bring back the texture around the edges. So I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer. Select a soft round brush and make sure that the black is showing. And then I'll increase the size of my brush and then just start painting around the edges. And you can see the texture coming in. And that's it. This photo is done. Here's the before and the after. So that's it. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about photo textures and veils through this video. And we would love for you to use these edits on your own photos and get creative with your photos. If you'd like to learn more about the photo veils and textures that you've seen featured in this video, visit lovethatshot.com forward slash shop and you'll find all the information you need to know there. So until next time, we will see you later.